Hi everyone, this is Mrs. G A, and today we're going to be identifying linear, quadratic, and exponential data, um, and then finding regression models for um, these types of data. Um, just so you know, you will definitely um, need your graphing calculator for today, um, so make sure you get that out and you have it available. All right, I have a quick warm up for you guys, um, so please pause the video and give this one a try. All right, check your work here. So you can see I use the compound interest formula for both. Um, so for Lisa, the R value is 0.02, and that N value is 12 because it's compounded monthly. And then for Laura, the R value is 0.015, and the N value is 4. And of course, that initial amount is slightly different. So you can see that after five years, Laura has a little bit more money, 12 cents more, um, but that would be the um, more optimal account to choose. All right, so today we're going to be um, working with different types of data. Um, so sometimes the data will be represented with a table of values like this. Sometimes you'll see um, maybe like a, a scatter plot with the different um, data sets as coordinates. So it's important that we know how to look at different forms of data and identify what type of model would be the best fit. Um, so today we're going to be looking at some things that are either linear, quadratic, or exponential. So from a table of values, um, the way you can tell if something is linear is if um, there is a common difference in the y values. Now one thing to point out, you have to make sure um, the intervals for your x values are consistent. So you can see here that these are all just um, increasing by one. As long as they're increasing by the same amount, that's fine. So then you just look at the difference in y values. So you can see from here to here, you're adding three. From here to here, you're adding three. And since that's consistent for all of your data sets, we would say that this is best modeled with a linear function. So there's a common difference in y values. Now for a quadratic function, um, the data would actually have a common difference of differences. So again, you do need to have a, a common difference of the x values. This should be the same interval. Now if you um, look at the difference between um, your y values, you have negative one, then three, then seven, then 11. So the difference here, the difference in y values is not consistent. But then if you take, if you look at those numbers, you'll notice a pattern. The difference between those differences is consistent. Um, so that represents a quadratic model. So you, uh, think of it like this, since it's x squared, you have to look at the second level of differences. So again, the difference of y values is not common, but the difference of differences is the same. Um, the, the difference between these two numbers is four, here is four. So that's how you could identify a quadratic um, function uh, from a, a um, set of, from a table of data. And then let's look at what an exponential table looks like. So again, we have that common difference for the x values, same interval. So if you look at the y values here, you don't have a common difference, you have a common ratio, meaning you're multiplying by the same um, number to get to the next term. Um, so you can kind of look at your data, and sometimes it's not perfect, but if it's really, really close, um, we could say that um, you could model it with that function. Again, we'll, we'll be doing regression models where really it's, it's a, it's a model that would represent most of the data. So if it's a close fit, we could say that we can use that type of function. Um, and like I said, we might be working with tables of data, or maybe you're working with a scatter plot like you see here. Um, so sometimes it's kind of hard to tell um, just by looking at a scatter plot what would be the best fit. Um, but um, for, for something like this, so if I look at part A, I can see that if you know if I was to draw in a line that would kind of be close to all of the graphs, it would look something like this. So I would say that probably the best fit for the type of function for this would be linear. Now, if you look at this next one, um, it's not quite as linear looking. And actually, to me, it kind of looks like it's maybe doing something like this. So I would say that you could actually model this with a quadratic, and that quadratic would have a negative a value because you can see it's kind of um, it's concave down. Now, if you look at this next one, um, you can see that there's a pretty quick drop off and then my points seem to be flattening out. So something like this, I would say, oh, it looks kind of like a graph that's doing this, which would be an exponential function. 
And you can see Part D almost looks exactly the same, but you can see there's a little uptick kind of towards the end. So maybe for this one, you'd say, okay, this looks like it'd best be modeled with more of a quadratic with a positive A value. Again, like the difference between data that looks like this and this is very similar. And a lot of it is kind of subject to um, your interpretation. Um, so again, models are all about getting a general estimate um, for the trend that your data is following. So it's not always going to be perfect and maybe your answer might not exactly match my answer, um, but we'll do our best to pick the best option. All right, so here are um, some of the steps listed out that we're going to be following um, to help us do the, create these regression models in our uh, graphing calculators. So this is um, the steps for the TI-84+. Um, it will probably be about the same steps um, if you have another TI version, but if you have a different type of graphing calculator, um, you might have to you know, Google how to um, find these regression models. But again, we're just gonna be following these steps. Um, so I won't necessarily show all of that in the video, um, but I will show you guys the outcome of what we should expect for those uh, regression models. But here you can follow um, step by step how to um, enter the data into a t-chart, how to see that scatter plot of your graph to, to give an idea of like what type of function we're working with, um, and then how to create the regression model, and then how to actually graph that regression model as well to make sure that it does look like a good fit for our um, data. All right, so here's our first uh, problem. So here we have a table of data. So first thing we need to do is try to figure out what type of uh, model would be the best fit for this. Um, so first of all, I'm looking through it and I see that um, my input or the number of years is um, consistent, so this is increasing by 10. So now if I look here, I can pretty quickly see that it's not growing um, in a linear way. It's not growing in a linear way, because if you look at the distance from here to here, it's a lot different than the distance from here to here. Like, look, this is almost um, 12 million apart. Um, so for this one, maybe we would check um, to see if this is exponential growth. So remember the way that you do that is you take any um, y value and you divide it by the one before. And then for these, I'm just going to, um, for my y value, use the millions. Um, so for this, I would actually, I would just use 3.9. For this, I would just use 5.3. For this, I would just use 7.2, just to make it a little bit easier. And since we're modeling anyways, it's all going to be an approximation. So again, I'm going to use that. So let's check to see what some of these common ratios are. So between the first two points, um, this common ratio is 1.3. Uh, I'll say 1.36 if I round properly. Okay, let's try the next one. Again, the common ratio here uh, would be 1.36. So you can keep checking all of these. Like, let's check down here just to see if it's consistent. I would check most, uh, most of them to make sure it's relatively consistent. So if I do um, 62, or I guess I'll just do 63 divided by 50, uh, here we get 1.25. Let's check between these two. So 50.2 divided by 38.6. Here we get like 1.30. So you can see that they're all pretty close. Like again, when we're modeling with a, especially with the regression model, it's not going to be an exact fit for all of the coordinates, but if it's pretty close, which you can see all of these have a pretty similar common ratio, we could say that we can model this um, with an exponential function. So this is going to be exponential. So first we're going to want to um, plug this into our um, calculator. So we're going to plug this in and, and create a scatter plot using those first few steps. And just so you know, for um, the x values, um, instead of saying, like, we're not going to actually input um, 1790, uh, we can just, we could say this is 0, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3. And we can understand that our x value, or our x axis, is represented in years. Um, 
since 1970, and we could know that it's every 10 years. Um, so we can kind of adjust the scale of our x-axis, but I'm just going to plug in 0, 1, 2, 3 instead of these actual years, um, just to make it a little easier to see. Okay, so I went in and I um, put these points into my, um, into my table of values. Again, I did this in million, so I actually typed in 3.9, 5.3, so on and so forth, and remember I started here with 0, 1, 2, 3. So here's my um, 11 points. This is how I scaled my window. Just um, So again, I went from 0 to 11, just so there's a little extra space there, and I looked at all my Y values, and I thought, okay, 0 to 65 would be a pretty good window. So you could see that our graph, or our data is exponential. This would be a good um, type of function to model this with. So now we actually have to go in and do um, the exponential regression, so you could follow those steps from the previous slide. All right, and when I ran that regression um, in my calculator, here's what I got. Um, for the A and B values, and then you can see what the graph looks like. So this graph is actually a really good fit for this data. Of course, there's some data points like this one right here. It's like a little bit of an outlier, but it still is pretty close. Um, so we have, depending on how you round, I have 4.098 times 1.327 to the power of x would be our um, exponential uh, model. Okay, let's look at this next uh, Example. So here you can see that our data is given graphically, um, but we also have those coordinates, exact coordinates listed down here. So just looking at this, um, we can see that this will probably be best modeled with a linear function. So we're going to do a linear regression, um, but I'm going to show all these steps in just a second. I'm going to plot these points into my own calculator. Um, and then run the regression model and then graph it to make sure that the graph matches the points. All right, so here um, are some pictures of what my calculator looked like. So here's um, the A and B values I got after running the linear regression. And here you could see our, is my scatter plot with um, that linear model graphed. So you could see, oh, this is actually a pretty good fit for this set of data. And then the function, again, I rounded this time to the nearest tenth, 9.9x plus 113.9. All right, let's try one more together. Um, so again, we have a set of data um, given as a scatter plot. So kind of looking at this one, I can see that it this one, it looks like it will probably be some type of quadratic model. So that's what I'm going to go for for this one. Um, so we can type in um, these data points to our calculator. I think for this one, I'm going to change the scale of my y-axis to thousands. Um, so instead of plugging in 3,300, I'll just plug in 3.3, and here I'll do 3.1 uh, or 3.127. So I'm going to change this to thousands um, for my y values, and here notice that we're starting at um, zero for your x values. Um, so I'm going to plug those in and then run the quadratic regression model, and then I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so. Um, here you can see our, my, um, my, my scatter plot is here, um, and then when I ran the regression, I got these for my A, B, and C values. Um, so I rounded and I got approximately this, which is a pretty good fit for this data. Um, and oh, you will need to um, change the window from the previous problem. So if you go to graph and you forget to do that, you'll see pretty quickly that it's not like you won't be able to see what's going on very well. So make sure you adjust the window for each new problem. All right, I have this one for you to try on your own, uh, so please pause the video and give it a shot. All right, go ahead and check here. Um, so for this one, again, there's that common interval for your x values, so you can check for maybe a common difference. And here, it's not perfect, but you can see that there's, it's pretty close to having a common difference, or you know, they're close enough. Um, but if you're really not sure, you could actually plot these points and just look at the scatter plot, and then you can see before you run the regression that it is following a linear um, trend. So you run your linear regression, and here's what you get. Um, so I said 0.3x minus 0.8. Um, and you can see it's a pretty good fit. All right, pause the video again and give this one a try on your own.
Okay, so for this one, um, by looking at the scatter plot, um, it looks like this would be best modeled with an exponential function. Um, so I plotted that, I ran my regression, and here's a graph of that regression model. So it's a pretty good fit. And then um, here's what I rounded my A and B values to. Okay, here's a last one for you guys to try. Um, so pause the video again, and we'll check your answers in just a few seconds. All right, so um, here's my scatter plot, and I did um, set my window to kind of match what I see here. So I set the Y minimum to 20, which is why you don't actually see the X axis. Um, and then I chose to do a quadratic regression because it looks like it's kind of has a little uptick and is turning back around. Um, and here's what I got for my A, B, and C values. So I rounded them here. You can see that this graph is a pretty good fit. Okay, so that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching.